Uh, welcome dear students uh, to another class of the apple card by George Bernard Shaw. Now I gave uh, an introduction to you related to the play and a bit of a background of the title of the play. That why the uh, name of the play, the title of the play has been kept the apple card by Bernard Shaw and uh, a little bit of an idea of the background of the play that the, what the play deals about. Now, as I already told in the last lecture, that this play definitely deals with a strife between the royalty, the, that is the king, and the government, the democratic government, that is the prime minister. Now, uh, again, I would uh, just to give you a brief sketch of uh, the idea about the play, and I'm going a bit slowly so that you understand in detail what exactly you need to know about it so you have an idea about what the play deals with. Now as you already know that it's a political extravaganza or it's a political satire but basically it deals with a political strife so it's, this play is related to with the politics and the government and all these things. So uh, a little bit of complication is there but we will be able to understand in a much better way because I'm simplifying it a lot and then I'm explaining it to you. Now, first of all, you already know that the apple cart was written, um, it is uh, by George Bernard Shaw and it is the 40th play of uh, Shaw and it was completed in the early part of the year 1929. Now, uh, it is. It was George Bernard Shaw who has called this play the Apple Card. He kept the title. He and uh, also he also called it a political extravaganza. You can say it could be the subtitle he kept of the play. And you know what is an extravaganza? It's an impressive entertainment or an event. A very large impressive entertainment or event. That basically Apple Card. Uh, extravaganza is so uh, but there is little in it that is widely extravagant apart from the passage in the last act where the American ambassador visits King Magnus to tell him that the United States has decided to rejoin the British Empire that is America has decided to join the uh, British Empire, the British, from which it broke away and declared independence in the year 1770. So this background is important for you to understand. Now, in the year 1929, a Labour government was in office in Britain and its socialist principles were largely those which Bernard Shaw himself had held since he became converted to socialism in the year 1884. A lot of things that happened in the life of George Bernard Shaw that influenced. Uh, we can talk here about the World War One, or we can talk about the political conditions in England during those times. So there are so many things that's connected to here. So what exactly is mentioned here? That uh, the Labour government was in office in Britain, and the socialist principles were largely those which Shaw himself was in favour when he converted to socialism, and. It therefore surprised and angered many of his fellow socialists. What is socialism? A socialist, one who believes in the uh, one who believes in the belief of society and uh, the uh, the traditions and customs. To find that in the apple cart, he was on the side of King Magnus and against the democratic cabinet in their struggle to keep the king under control. So, what was the problem? Why the people people didn't like about Alexander Bernard Shaw is that. They believed that he was favouring the royalty, that is King Magnus, that is King, and he was against the democratic democracy, that is the Prime Minister, and he was about to keep himself away from this struggle. That is, he wants to, in their struggle to keep the King under control. So the King has to be kept under control by the government, otherwise the King could use it, could use or misuse its power in some or the other way. So. Shaw says in the beginning, in the preface of the play, Shaw already mentioned that a large number of people considered that he was betraying the democratic belief which he had held for so many years. 
तो पीपल बिलीव इट इफ इफ ही सेव इन द किंग और इफ इफ ही सेव इन द रॉयल्टी ओके देन ही इज बिट्रेइंग द डेमोक्रेटिक बिलीफ एंड दिस बिलीफ व्हिच ही हैड हेल्ड वेरी क्लोज फॉर विद हिमसेल्फ फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स बट ही डिक्लेयर्स दैट ही वाज इन फैक्ट कैरिंग द डेमोक्रेटिक आइडिया टू इट्स लॉजिकल एक्सट्रीम बाय मेकिंग मैग्नस थ्रेट इन टू रिजाइन हिज थ्रोन सो इट वाज हिज प्लान शॉर्ट प्लान to it was a logical extreme that he was making magnus threaten to resign his throne king magnus he wanted to threaten and away so this is another plan that was going on the mind of bernard shaw now and he also wanted to put himself in the uh, as a ordinary candidate to the next general election so this was what was growing up in the mind of shaw now if the cabinet had allowed him to do so and magnus had been elected to parliament as the head of a majority party he would have become prime minister himself and have not only a popularly elected leader but it would seem a more consensus one than his rival proteus so now proteus is the one who is the prime minister and uh, this was the problem that so indicates here and of course magnus is the king so he said that it could definitely be a rivalry between these two so bernard shaw also maintains in the beginning of the play he says that he had made magnus a wise man and proteus a fool this is the way proteus is the prime minister so he presented proteus as a fool and magnus the wise man and he says they are equally skillful they are equally talented now here shaw was himself mistaken for the truth is that in the character of king magnus he created a genius who ran away with his creator so this was neither a fault nor an accident for which shaw should be blamed so every great writer sometimes it happens that you know his career is controlled by forces outside but we cannot say that we cannot understand what was going on in the mind of shaw when he created these characters and what kind of power and influence he gave to these different kinds of characters he thought of life force as a power whose purpose it is to evolve better and better men and women who will build grad gradually a better world and great imaginative writers so this was the main thing that was going on in the mind of George Bernard Shaw. Now, now uh, I will simplify it more and more and explain it to you about the uh, the strife and the uh, kind of, uh, you can say, um, uh, 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 an attack made by Shaw uh, on these uh, uh, two characters, that is the king and the prime minister, and of course, what all things are coming in the way and how uh, Shaw himself represents. Uh, as a character or, or as a nature an individual through the play we'll continue the next class thank you